hi guys welcome to the next video of the structure tutorial series in this video we will see how we can do the input validation using the programmatic validation technique now for the last couple of videos we saw how we can put the validation rules in our validation.xml file for our action class fields now this technique is called the declarative validation where the validation rules are kept in an XML file with a combination of certain built-in validators. Now there is another approach where the validation logic is handled entirely in the code and that is called the programmatic validation. Now for doing the programmatic validation Struts has provided one validatable interface that an action can implement it has only one method validate if an action implements the validatable interface struts will call its validate method automatically and we can write our validation logic for the user input in this method now the good thing is that our action support class already implements this interface so we don't have to implement the validatable interface directly if our action class is extending from the action support class if the validation fails then we need to call the add field error method to show the error message to the input field the field name and the error message we can pass to this add field error method but to use this add field error method we need to implement the validation aware interface now, struts has provided one implementation class for this interface and that is validation aware support class so we can extend from this validation aware support class if we want to use the validation error message related methods a good thing another good thing is that the action support class is taking care of this as well so we can just call the add field error method of the action support class and in turn the action support class calls the add field error of the validation aware support object now let's take an example for this programmatic validation technique how to use this suppose we have one requirement for our login page for our user ID field that the user ID should not contain any white space sometimes user might provide the user ID with the white space and we want to validate that and tell the user that the user ID cannot contain any white space so let's add the coding for the user ID field in the validate method. First override the validate method here in the verify login action. Okay, let's override this method validate here. Okay, here in this method we will put the validation logic and we'll validate whether the user ID is containing any white space or not. We'll loop through the user id field of this user object and then compare it with the compare each and every character with the white space and if if there is any white space then we'll call the add field error of this add field error uh, on that uh, user id field okay let's go ahead and do the coding for this It requires two parameters. First, the field name and then the error message. User ID cannot contain any white space. Okay, so that's it. 
our validate method is ready and now before going ahead with the programmatic validation let's remove the files for the declarative validation technique so we'll remove this very file login action validation xml file so that we know that the validation is coming from the programmatic validation not from the declarative validation and we'll remove the user validation xml file as well okay so now we only have the validation in this validate method we don't have uh, the validation logic anywhere else so let's test this let's give a value with a white space here let's give nish space percent password here and login okay so we are getting the error like user id cannot contain any white space the error which we gave in our error message here in the add field error so that that means that our programmatic validation is working fine one thing to note is that the validation interceptor takes care of calling the validate method before the action method is called so after the user object is populated from the input field it calls the validate method and after that it calls its action method that's how the program flow goes for the validation technique so the important interfaces involved in this validation technique were validatable interface the validation aware interface and one more important class is validation aware support class which is the implementation class for the validation aware interface but everything is actually taken care by the action support class so we actually need not do anything from our side except override its validate method okay so this is it for this video we will see some more stuff of stuff 2 in next video thanks for watching